Welcome everybody to Arms, Armor, Etc. here on Cracking in Your Coffee. For our first episode, I wanted to take a look at my personal favorite piece in my collection. This knife is by far the rarest thing I own, but it's also heavily underrepresented here on YouTube, as I've only found a few videos discussing them. Without further ado, I present to you a 1943 era U.S. Marine Corps Hospital Corpsman Bolo knife. To kick things off, it's worth noting how this knife came into my possession. A year and a half ago, I was at my first gun show with some friends. I didn't have my firearms license at the time, I still don't and it's really something I need to get around to, but I was mostly there to look at knives anyway. Side note, this particular gun show also ended with one of my buddies buying the most insane thing I've ever heard of for a first gun purchase, but that's a story for a different day. Anyway, back to the bolo. I found a military surplus dealer selling a large collection of knives, with the largest among them being a single bolo knife. I talked with the dealer for a while about the knife, at that point knowing nothing about its history, but as soon as he started explaining its significance, I decided immediately that I needed to have it. One of my friends was extremely kind and bought it for me as a college graduation present right then and there. Can't thank him enough for that, as well as the dealer, for cutting us a huge deal on the purchase. The knife clearly had seen a large amount of use over the years, and while its integrity was there, it needed some cleaning up. I set to work on a several week project of restoring it to its former glory, and I must admit I'm rather proud of the outcome. Initially, the oxidation damage to the blade was so bad, it was almost impossible to draw it from its scabbard. The lacquer on the hilt was chipped and uneven, leaving the texture quite rough. After hours of cleaning, sharpening, sanding, and varnishing, this is the end result. I know some of you are probably screaming at me for doing any work at all to a knife this old. My intention was to prevent further damage and decay from age and neglect while keeping it as intact as possible. I very rarely use my bolo, as it is a historical piece that I want to keep as preserved as possible, but I am extremely impressed by its performance, which you'll see a little bit later on in this video. Before moving into the history of bolo knives, and the function of this knife in particular, here's a few quick facts about this knife's design. The blade is forge made and is stamped USMC Chatlin, New York. Chatlin & Sons was a manufacturer that produced a number of forged household products, particularly kitchen knives, between the years 1880 and about the end of World War II. As far as I've seen, this model Bolo is the only military knife that they ever produced, although it's possible that there were others. The scabbard is genuine leather and is also stamped USMC, followed by Boyt and the year it was made, 1943. Boyt is a leatherworking company still in existence today, founded by Walter Boyt in Des Moines, Iowa in 1885. Boynt is much better known for its gun cases than scabbards, but it also produces saddles and harnesses for riding. Both the locket on the scabbard and the rivets on the hilt are made of brass, and the cordage is genuine leather as well. The knife and scabbard were intended to be mounted with an M1910 clip onto a pistol belt, which you can see displayed here. While the belt itself is a familiar design within the U.S. Armed Forces, the clasp is something I've never seen before, and honestly a design I quite enjoy. Instead of relying on buckles, belt loops, or buttons, the belt is held together with two hinges that hook into each other at a perpendicular angle. This system holds together quite well while also allowing for rapid removal of the belt without requiring the use of both hands. I should also note that while this knife is heavy, and by heavy I mean it feels like a lead brick in your hand, the scabbard, belt, and clip do an excellent job of supporting the weight, keeping it secured and easily accessible when worn together. I feel it's important to make mention of the usefulness of the full system because any vendors I've seen carrying this make of bolo are missing the belt, and many that do have the scabbard are missing the belt clip. I consider myself incredibly fortunate in owning one that includes all of its components and would highly recommend doing the same if you're able to get your hands on one. Before delving deeper into the specifics of this blade, it's important to understand what a bolo actually is, as most Westerners might be unfamiliar with this type of knife. A bolo knife is a machete style of Filipino origin intended for brush clearing and secondarily as a martial weapon. While blade shape and design may vary significantly, a bolo knife generally is weighted towards the end of the blade in a paddle or leaf shaped pattern. This distinguishes the bolo from the Latin style machete, which has an evenly weighted straight blade much more familiar to Western audiences. The bolo knife is a strong cultural symbol of resistance in the Philippines as it was used both in the Filipino Revolution and the Philippine-American War of the late 19th century. In particular, 
the Kataputan, a Filipino revolutionary society that fought against Spanish colonialism, adopted the bolo as a symbol of resistance. Andreas Bonifacio, the leader of the Kataputans, and sometimes referred to as the father of the Filipino revolution, is often depicted bearing both the Kataputan flag and a bolo knife. And to all my Filipino listeners, I'm sorry if I completely butchered that pronunciation. The bolo knife, while varied in design and specific function, is at heart a chopping tool intended for agricultural use. The weighted head and shorter blade length make it ideal for harvesting row crops, such as grains and legumes. Similarly to any improvised weapon, like a sickle or flail, a bolo knife adopted for combat would function much the same way as its agricultural role. Having covered the basics of bolo knives, let's move on to this particular model. As mentioned before, this is a World War II era USMC Hospital Corpsman Bolo Knife made in 1943. It's important to clarify that this is a World War II Pacific Theater Bolo because there are earlier models of Bolo Knives that were used by the US Armed Forces that date all the way back to World War I and arguably even earlier. The 1917 is by far the most common other model of Bolo used by American military and served as the precursor to the World War II model. Here you can see the design of my 1943 compared with a standard 1917. While roughly similar, there are a few key differences. While the 1917 had a traditional pointed edge blade tip, the 1943 is unusually rounded and curves almost a quarter of the way around the back edge of the knife. While this reduces the 1943's effectiveness as a stabbing tool due to the fact that it spreads out the impact of a blow over a wider area, it gives the advantage of making the 1943 an entrenchment tool of sorts, since the rounded blade is excellently shaped for digging. The 1943 lacks any semblance of a guard, whereas the 1917 sports a flat, rounded, tipped, double-sided crossguard designed for parrying and hand protection. The lack of a crossguard on the 1943 may feel like a major oversight when considering the fact that it is a knife intended for military use, but then again, a crossguard would be a hindrance when using the knife to clear brush or when fighting in dense foliage, so the change could be considered a trade-off. While some bolos have a much more prominently curved handle, the 1917 and the 1943 both sport a straight handle that's roughly the same, with the only noticeable difference being the palm swell and rounded grip of the 1917 over the flatter, purely straight design of the 1943. While I don't have my hands on a 1917 to know for sure, I imagine that its grip is moderately more comfortable. The only other difference of note is the base of the hilt of the 1917 includes a metal cap that fully encompasses the end of the hilt of the knife as opposed to the predominantly wood make of the 1943. This allows for the pommel of the 1917 to be used as a bludgeoning tool, but the practical application of this seems very minimal. The last small noticeable difference between the 1943 and the 1917 is the number of rivets in the hilt. The 1943 has three, which is standard in most knives, especially culinary ones, which makes sense considering the knife's maker. Whereas the 1917 only has two, which could possibly affect the integrity of the grip over time. I should also note that some World War II era bolos I've seen have four rivets in the hilt, providing even more security to the blade. The 1917 was designed and used as a combat knife first and foremost, whereas the 1943 was built to be a tool and only intended to function as a weapon in emergency circumstances. This could explain some of the changes in bolo design among the U.S. Armed Forces between the First and Second World War. Having distinguished its differences from the 1917, we could dig deeper into the function of the 1943. The 1943 was designed for use in the Pacific Theater during World War II by the United States Marine Corps. It would typically be carried by field medics or a single member of a fire team, as it is a specialized knife. I should stress here that the 1943, unlike the 1917, is not a combat knife. While that is not to say it can't function as a weapon, it's best to compare the 1943 to an entrenchment tool. Both can be used in combat, but that's not their primary intended purpose. In terms of application, the 1943 could be used for digging due to its rounded blade. It was also used for brush clearing and cutting bamboo for shelters or stretchers. Considering that bolo knives originated in the South Pacific, 
I find it quite interesting to see this American-made knife getting created specifically for use in the South Pacific and serving almost the exact same role as its predecessors, even though it was designed for military, not domestic use. The 1943 has quite a few stories surrounding it that beef up its reputation as an intimidating knife. By far, my favorite is that marine medics use this knife to amputate limbs from their patients. The comparison between the density of human bones and the bamboo shoots is often mentioned to back this up. While I don't doubt this knife's capacity to cut through bone if needed, I've yet to find any evidence to say concretely that it was used in this way. As I mentioned before, I rarely use my bolo, but only a few months ago, I did take it with me on a camping trip with some friends. It was late December, and the cold required us to keep a fire going the whole time. As such, we ended up processing a huge amount of wood, so I took the opportunity to put my bolo through trial by fire. I found out just what this knife can do while splitting some old planks of wood we found at the campsite. At the time, I hadn't realized it, but the particular plank I was working on had a piece of nail running through the middle of it. I took a few swings at the plank and it broke in half easily. This is when I found the nail, which to my surprise had been cut cleanly through. I was worried at first that the blade of my bolo might have been damaged, but after closer inspection I couldn't see even the tiniest nick in the blade. While unintentional, I feel like this is the best test of durability and raw chopping potential I could put my bolo through, and I was extremely impressed at how well a 70 year old piece of surplus was able to perform. I may make additional videos on my bolo in the future, but having covered its history, design, and my personal experience with this knife, I feel like this is a good place to end the video. I hope you enjoyed my first video on this channel. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to be back soon with more content.